In the beginning, there were only regular fights. Simple and mundane tiffs between humans and other things. But as the things learned to fight back, something new was created. The Boss Fight The boss fight increased in difficulty, all the way to Nightmare Mode. Soon, there was no hope for the mere mortal human. But then, the greatest sage and the greatest battle master started to share their wisdom with others. You're now allowed to listen to that wisdom. The great wisdom of Austin and Aubrey. Da, 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 da. Tip of the tongue, the teeth, and the lips. Okay. Me, 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 me. Okay. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Boss Fight with Austin and Aubrey. I am Austin. And I am Aubrey. Oh, man, we made it. We finally made it. <laughs> yeah, to, <laughs> to episode three. Are, yeah. are you talking about the fact that we're recording later than we said we were going to record? I mean, pick your poison. Okay. Well, for the first one, it's just because we made so much money off of the movie deal that we talked about last week. Oh, and yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I've already flushed that. It was so it was so long ago. So, <laughs> so many yesterday's hours that project. Yeah. Uh, uh, but today, the, the late recording thing, that's... Yeah, so the whole, I had a, we were going to record earlier today, and then all of a sudden my boss called me up and said I had to go to this meeting that I didn't have to go to before, and then I, I went to the meeting, and then all it was, I mean, it was basically just, it should have been an email. The whole meeting should have been an email. There were so many people, they just debated about it's, things, and then at the very end it was like, um, okay, so we'll just put this off till next meeting. It's like, oh. Oh, God, that's the worst kind of meeting. Like, if if ever I walk into a meeting and I sit down and I look at the agenda and I'm like, literally, this could have been covered if someone stopped by my cubicle and said, hey, do you got time for like five minutes while we talk about something? Or better yet, sent me a list and an email and I could have gotten on with the rest of my day. Or you you sit down, you look at the agenda, and then they're the minutes from last week, and then most of the meeting is just talking about if the minutes of last meeting was correct. That's fun. Really? Because it sounds awful. Yeah, no, it was awful. Um, <laughs> it was it was the literal worst. Yeah. Oh God. Um. Well, that but that's that's an interesting uh an interesting thing to bring to the show because i feel like this is a very relatable sort of instance for many people who work that nine to five grind or you know some other occupation that calls for so many unnecessary meetings because if you're if you're doing the nine to five grind you're trying to you're trying to make that that currency to to buy those really good items that you need to progress in your in the game that we call life then you're gonna have to sit through a lot of should have been an email meetings are are you suggesting this as our as our first boss fight this week i think it's important that we that we (laughs) that we teach people how to tackle this topic because it's 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 very it's very relatable it's very ubiquitous everyone has that shared email meeting experience and i think i think it's important that we that we teach and we, we pass on our sage wisdom. No, that's good because we didn't we didn't get any new emails this week. So. Yeah, hey, hey guys. What's up? Come on. Hey. We are we're servants is yeah. what we are. We're just trying to serve the public. And if we don't know what the public's problems are in their that what bosses that they, they have to be, then how are how are we supposed to help the world? Like, I mean, obviously... Oh, shit. We should probably explain what our podcast is if we're going to just hop right into... If this is what oh, we're going to complain about. Yeah, sure. So this is, um, this, is a, this is a very, very serious intellectual show, as you've almost certainly surmised, that uh, we take questions from 
listeners every every week, but this week apparently. Um, and we 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 teach you how to deal with life's biggest boss fights. You know those 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 obstacles standing in your way. So you know we've talked about three tigers in a trench coat. Uh, we've talked about uh, vending machine, uh, centaurs, uh, Scorpios. No, it was Virgos. I don't. Doesn't we, matter. we talked. We, we yeah. Really, doesn't matter. We can help with all of it. Is what is what we're trying to say. So if you if you have a if you have a big challenge you got to get across, you come to us, the greatest battle master and the greatest sage that ever is or was or will be. Yeah, but not everything's about our listeners. So let's talk about my problems for a little bit, Austin. Yeah, uh, listeners, you're being really selfish. We're dealing with a lot of stuff on our end. This is very stressful, and sometimes we just need to to vent. So how, how so, do we how do we beat the meeting that should have been an email? So I I feel like I feel like there's there's one there's one obvious answer. There's two obvious answers. One is to quit your job. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, now, well, well, hold up. I don't. I wouldn't say that, but. <laughs> That is that is an option that you have if you're if you're looking for alternate employment or you're just sick of all of the right. meetings like it's every it's every day with this company you might you might need. I was gonna say you could always fall back on podcasting because we've proven it's very lucrative. Yeah, I mean uh, we've got oh god so much money so merchandising much money. Uh, movie mm-hmm. deals. Uh, I mean just last week I had uh, I had lunch with uh, Stephen Sondheim about the musical interpretation of our uh, of our show so yeah in the animated series i uh talked to dreamworks about that uh, uh and the anime series yeah which was also strangely a meeting with dreamworks i didn't know yeah that you know you wouldn't you wouldn't that. think yeah it was actually it was two separate meetings and honestly the anime one should have been an email again <laughs> but <laughs> uh <laughs> All right. What's the anyway, second option besides quitting your job? Um, the other, the other glaringly like obvious one that's kind of like the it's it sounds like it's good advice, but really there's a lot more that goes into it, of course. Um, and that's become the boss, and then say, hey, we're not going to do this shit anymore. I think we should explore the second option. I like it. So how do you how do you become your how, how do you become the boss? First one's murder the boss. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say poison. Yeah, yeah. Poison's poison's one. I guess it depends on what kind of office space you work in, right? Because sometimes some of them work on subterfuge, like uh, old politics, and some of them are more just trial by combat, right? You challenge the boss to yeah. uh, uh, it to to fight you in the fighting pits, and if you beat them with raw strength, you become the new boss. Yeah, some of them are really into that kind of political game, though, where it's like, ah, I gotta rally the followers, and I have to have a legitimate heir to the throne, and you know, it's, it's a whole, yeah. it's a whole hassle. That and then now, granted, that if if that's the game that you have to play, so be it. That is going to take you several years uh, of conquest before before you're ready to take over that role. So just be ready for that if you go that route. I I do so. The biggest problem with this, once again, why it takes so long sometimes is that there's a clear hierarchy as who takes over when one of the bosses dies, right? The first one right. is always the boss's kid. So the good news about about that one is you can fix that problem uh, on bring your kid to work day. So that's that, that opportunity presents itself. Uh, after boss's kid, it's what, vice president or vice CEO or whatever? I don't know business terms. I'm a teacher. Um, no, it's it's vice in charge. Guy. Oh, it's vice in charge guy, right? Then you've got your vice in charge or, guy. Or, sorry, or or girl. Or, you're right. Vice in charge human, and then after that is vice in charge buffalo, as every office space has to have a buffalo. Well, see, actually, when you're that's true. When you're from, you're originally from the region that we are, Aubrey. But I have I've since moved to Seattle. Uh, it's actually a duck. We got a duck in huh. uh, in that position in our office. So. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very different dynamic. I think I like it. It's a good change. Um, I don't like I don't like the corkscrew penis, but that's <laughs> that's a different that's a different topic for a much different show. All right, so if you can, if you can't be the boss, then you're going to have to come up with a strategy to tackle each meeting 
like so this is this is kind of like you know when you when you're gearing up for the raid and you and you got to do it a bunch of times to get the gear that you want you are going to have to sit through a lot of these email meetings so you really just need to kind of speed run and like min max your experience in this meeting so that every meeting that comes up it always gets a little bit easier and you know what's going on and you and you are able to just oh email meeting no problem hour done i got it uh let's break down what parts of this kind of meeting that should have been an email what's going to happen and then give you the solutions for each part because it's a multi-step process right you're going to have to have a bunch of key elements together that form a cohesive picture rather than oh it's just one boss i can take him no 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 you got to have strategic plans for different different aspects of the meeting so okay number one number one aspect you walk into this email meeting aubrey what are you dreading the most the thing that I think I'm dreading the most is that before everything actually starts, there's 10 minutes of technology being set up and by somebody who doesn't know technology, right? You're, you're looking at a 65-year-old man trying to put up a PowerPoint. He doesn't know how to mm. do it. He's also still using PowerPoint, which is, ugh. How do we, how do I make, I don't know how to fix that. Okay, um, so... Now, I want to I want to get ahead of this and say the the solution is not to show up 10 minutes late thinking that you can miss this and it'll be okay because you're not going to get uh the full experience from the meeting. Like if you're if you're grinding this out over and over again, you want maximum experience gains so you can level up your your skills and talents. And and let's be real, the problem is that they didn't show up 10 minutes early and get the technology working, right? They waited to set up the right. technology and things until everybody was there when the meeting was supposed to start. So you just throwing up 10 minutes late will mean that the technology won't be ready until 20 minutes after the, yeah, the meeting like was supposed it's, to start. It's a, it's a terrible, vicious cycle. So what you can do, uh, if you want to take some responsibility for yourself, you can say, you know what, uh, Gregory, let me handle the PowerPoint today. And then you show up 10 minutes early, make sure it's all set up. That way, it looks like you've got really, really great initiative. It is going to take an extra 10 minutes out of your day, but compare that to the 10 or 20 or 30 minutes that might tack on to the meeting on the front end. I feel like it's a solid investment, and, and it's something you're going to need to do for the, for the greater good. And plus, you look better because you said, I will volunteer to do this rather than waiting for five minutes into the 10 minute waiting period and say, oh, don't, how about I do that for you, right? That's undermining your boss. They're going to hate you more. Now, sure. alternatively, what I, what I think you could do is since they're still working using Microsoft products for all of this, what you do is you take the algorithm and the code for Clippy, the paperclip, and then 3D print it into a working Android of Clippy and just have Clippy tutor that person for hours on end in order for them to be able to use it. I like this solution. It's elegant, it's simple, it's cost effective. Okay, all the technology is already there. So these are really just systems you gotta put in place. And then once that's set up, that's gonna take care of itself. That's hands off for you. You do, you do, the, you do the work at the front end and then boom, you're, you're home free. You've, and you've created yourself a nice little ally or, you know, it's like the, okay, now Navi gets a little bit of annoying in Ocarina of Time, but, you know, it, it's there to let you know that you're not doing the right thing or that, you're do, or that you are doing the right thing. So maybe you've got yourself a little helper on the side. Yeah, get yourself a little fairy. So later when you take over the entire company, and you're looking for poisons, then Clippy shows up and says, are you trying to murder your boss? And then it points you to the right kind of poison. Yeah, it gives you like the step-by-step -step recipe. It pulls up, it pulls up the uh, Fantasy Food Network and tells you how to <laughs> brew, brew the perfect potion. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, they're going to have some seasonal recipes on there. Definitely try those. Uh, they're pretty good. Like some of the seasonal poisons, I uh, highly recommend. I, I just used one uh, on uh, an old boss of mine. It was like a lavender, like rose kind of poison. Very fragrant. Uh, very, very nice process to make. Uh, left left the office smelling nice uh, and not uh, of decomposing body. 
So I, I highly recommend you check out some of those recipes. The last boss that I poisoned, all I did was take the poison and pull off the, the label and then put a label where I drew with Sharpie the word water and then just left it on their desk. And yeah. that See, took care and, of it. And, <laughs> and you know, it was very simple. What, what was crazy to me is that the poison wasn't clear, but you know, it didn't Not matter. It, was, it, was, it, was, it said the bottle said water, so it was water. All right. So what's the thing that you dread most going into meeting that should have been an email? So my my problem with this is that the people who are most likely to call these meetings are the same kind of people who raise their hand when it's time for questions at the end, and they don't actually ask a question. They just have something that they want to let everyone know that they were thinking about mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because they want to feel I – call, I call them the self-important they, they want to feel like they have control. They call these pointless meetings so that they can spout off their useless knowledge. Uh, and that's when everyone gets frustrated because they're really just trying to, you know, not to be blue, but they're really just jerking themselves off. The solution for that, I think, is double-sided. It does two great things. First thing you do is you cut off their arms. So when that happens they can't raise their hands anymore which means that they're right. not getting their attention to meetings two they don't they no longer have the ability to jerk it yeah and it, god it's i'm so i'm so sick of the office jerking like it's gotten so out of hand hey america can we just quit it with the jerking it in the office can yes we quit that please, please? This, is, this is a place of business and enterprise not entertainment and pleasure and just okay? the general you know, sexual harassment thing. If we could just quit that, that would be great. Hey, hey, America, stop. Just take a beat, man. <laughs> All right, okay. what is what is another part of meeting that could have been an email? I, I don't like the fact when they expect you to have, like, your, your laptop or whatever in the office and they pull up the website and they walk you through instructions that are also listed on the website. Yeah, I think that should just be, I think a policy across America and just the world should be, if you're under 25, you don't have to show up to those meetings at all. Yeah. <laughs> we it's all know like, it. <laughs> and I feel like, I've, okay, under 25, free pass. Under 35, you take you take a test. Yeah, you, you get club a license, out of it. You get, you get a license that renews every four years um, that says, I have... I have technological proficiency and, 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 and maybe, maybe if you're working at a Microsoft, you can get like a class a license, but if you're working at like, I don't know, some insurance company, a class D license will suffice. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fair. But you, you show that you show your, you show your technological license uh, and you say, Oh no, sorry, I'm immune to this bullshit. And then you go, I don't know, play candy crush <laughs> instead. How about we move forward? Okay. So we've talked about meetings. Let's make this office space. Let's make this a the literal boss fight episode. We might oh yeah. Title we, it you that. know it feels it feels weird that we haven't done that yet. But I guess we're only three episodes in, so okay. we haven't exactly established a norm. Let's name some bad bosses. Okay, I've got a I've got a Forbes article here. Titled, oh, Forbes is the master of business. Yeah, I've got it's this article is titled Five Bad Bosses and How to Beat Them. So maybe chomp on our flavor a little bit, but. All right, so, so hit me up with one of them. So yeah, so Forbes, like I said, has has outlined five different kinds of bad bosses and given some solutions. Although on their article, their solutions are uh, two and a half lines long, and I, that that just doesn't cut it for me. So we're we're really gonna have to do a deep dive. The first boss that they have outlined is what they have labeled the robot. Now it's not actually a robot. Okay, so this boss is definitely actually a robot. And well, you know, it, you know you in, today's, an... <laughs> in today's age, it really can be. You know, it, it, it probably is, actually. Well, the first bad news is that you can't poison a robot. The good news is, is that you can water a robot, and that's basically poison for robots. Yeah, same thing. And you don't, get, you don't get on a list for buying hazardous materials. You right. can, it's easily concealed in that you can kind of just carry it around and no one's going to say anything. Like... You, have you tried teaching the robot boss to love? Yeah, because that's 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 gonna be that's gonna have two different po- possible effects. One, the boss the the robot does feel the capacity to love. It understands where it has wronged, 
uh, and it changes its ways and really makes the office environment uh, a lot more friendly and comfortable. Uh, the other complete opposite end of the spectrum option is that this overworks the robot circuits and it fries and explodes. Mm-hmm. And that's I, I, either way, it, you're going to be better off. It's just kind of you got to gauge what kind of model robot it is. What's the next type of boss? Uh, so next on the list, we've got the micromanager. Right. So this is the this is a boss that is very very small. In oh, of size. course. Yeah. I I wanna I wanna preface this before we kind of jump jump into the specific advice and say I know we said to do some punches. It's very hard to punch a tiny boss. Like punches punches are not your best option right poison's also not your best option you have to get them in a very very tiny container so you have to think about it differently uh i do want to just just to really give you the scope this isn't like a a short person right this is a micro person this is a very yes. small boss yeah uh, we're not we're not talking we're not talking four foot eight no we're talking four centimeters right like here's my solution uh and this requires some teamwork you have to find rick moranis and get get his technology that he created in honey i shrunk the kids and uh, honey i blew up the kids speaking of which what a terrible title honey i blew up the kids that's clearly yeah. doesn't mean make them large no it, it means you exploded them that was that was some really grossly interpreted clickbait like way before <laughs> that became prevalent just like honey i blew up the kids what <laughs> what is this movie oh they just get big mm. so so you get rick moranis and then and then you can make the micromanager the regular manager and then then you do punches you interweave punches and poisons and then you're good uh unless unless it goes too far and he becomes the macro manager in which case oh god no then, then you're really fucked. Yeah, you, there's there's a fine line, um, and maybe maybe we can, you you and I, Aubrey, can call up Rick Moranis. I feel like the the micromanager has become sort of prevalent in the workplace, uh, in a lot of like old fashioned settings. Like they want to mm-hmm. make sure everything's done correctly, and they're always like getting into your like stapler and like messing it up. Like it's <laughs> it's really annoying. Um, right. So maybe we, maybe we can kind of start a consulting business with Rick Moranis, like a la, almost like Ghostbusters. We we go in with our machinery into a workplace. We we blow up the manager. Yeah, uh, we do in, have in, to in the, name in the, it. <laughs> in the we blow we blow him up in the big sense, which is still just uh, bad. It's, it's a bad name. I like uh, that. Well, that's a we we clearly. That's how you defeat that boss. That's obvious. What is yeah, the next call, boss? Yeah, call us, and we'll call handle that one for and you. Rick Moranis. I'm going to go to Google Domains and see if if I can buy honeyibleweupyourboss.com. <laughs> I blew up your boss.com. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. It's mine now. Nice. All right, so <laughs> by the time you're listening to this episode, if you want to get to our website, you can find it at honeyibleweupyourboss.com. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> it'll, consult, it'll could there will be a now, like I said, we have we have a new contact form on the website. Uh, so if just specify in the subject line whether you have a question for the show or whether you uh, have a boss we need to blow up. Um, okay. Because we don't we we really don't want to mix those two up. Oh, uh, what's the next type of boss? Uh, the next on the list is the dreamer. So this is a boss that is always asleep. Yeah, they're always like they're just lean back in the chair and they they write memos in a fever state. They just they just kind of <laughs> whatever comes to them gets sent out into the office. Uh, it's a very chaotic uh, sort of LSD inspired kind of workplace. <laughs> I like how instead of going with very sleepy, we went with fucking fever dreams all the time. Just everything it gives is a fever dream. Dude, my boss walked into work, dropped some acid, and sent out <laughs> 10 memos. <laughs> so, um, hey, if, if, they're, if they're in a fever dream, is waking them up the way to do it? Or... 
I haven't. I've heard that you're never supposed to wake up somebody in a fever. Or is that sleepwalking? I think that's sleepwalking. Okay, never mind then. So file that one away for later. If um, if it is a sleepwalker kind of boss, you don't wake them up unless you're really prepared to throw a lot of punches. That's the yeah, only oh, way to do sure, it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so what about fever? Fever dreams. What do we? Can we wake them up? Because if that's the solution, then just carry around a pair of symbols all the time. And just every time you see the boss, just... Yeah, then. don't let him slip back into his his mind palace. Okay, It's a very dangerous place. He needs to be contained and controlled. Now, okay. the other option is you could Inception them, right? Get the technology from Inception and go into the brain. Oh, the problem yeah. is it's, it's, I think it's too chaotic in there. Yeah, so you're gonna have to um, pe- people what people like like essential oils nowadays. You maybe pump some essential oils, to calm them down, so the it's less chaotic. Then you get in there, and you get into that dream space, and you you do some you do some incepting. And what Make what are calm. we? At? Yeah, right. I mean you, you really just kind of just calm them down and maybe plant the idea in his in his very active imagination and say, hey, this is all great, and this is good ideas sometimes, but maybe we don't have to have a meeting to discuss every single, like, shitty plan that comes out of your dumb head. If it's if it's too chaotic in his brain, I think what you do is you set up an essential oil stand in his brain and then create it to be a big, booming business within his mind. Oh, and then yeah. everybody's doing essential oils, and though I don't really think it does that much, at least inside of his brain, that's what's going on. Yeah, because because if he if it's in his brain, and he has that belief, that's that's the whole Inception thing. Is that you go right. you go you go three you go three three dreams deep in your boss, and you're <laughs> you're plant you're planting oils, and all of a sudden. He's 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 one or two levels deep, and he doesn't know where all this calming stuff is coming from. He's not he's not consciously now, processing all that. If you if you go if you go four dreams deep into your boss, the with, with essential oils is that that's one the whole whatever your business is, it's going to change to an essential oils business, and oh, yeah. they're going to be everywhere within the office, and oh yeah. It's going to be so bad that the new medical policy is going to be just essential oils. Like, you could get stabbed in the leg or, like, the heart or something, and then it'll just be like, don't worry, brah, I got you some lavender. And then it'll, as if that's going to save you. So just make sure you only go three dreams deep in your boss. Well, to, to be fair, I don't think a lot is going to save you from being stabbed in the heart anyway, but... Except for lavender. It's- well, I guess that's true. Lavender so got so much healing properties. What's the, ne- and <laughs> What's the next boss? God. Uh, the next boss is the bully. Okay, so this is when you have a literal bovine as your boss. Am I right about that? <laughs> it's just a literal. Who let who let this this bull in here? Who let this thing with massive horns into the office? Uh, stupid. It knows nothing. <laughs> no, it, the bully, the <laughs> bully is like always trying to take your lunch money, and like, <laughs> it, which is weird that, because I don't, I don't think that our ideas are too different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ever, met a, a you ever met a that, bull? You ever met a bull that didn't ask for your lunch money? I've never met a bull that doesn't try to ask for your lunch money. All right, so okay, so may, may, okay, maybe maybe what Forbes was going for was like a minotaur kind of thing, and they they didn't know the the proper. Give me your lunch money, vernacular. or I'm gonna smash up all of your nice china. Yeah, which uh, which is I I saw them put leftover casserole in the fridge in the morning. I know that that's what they're planning to eat for lunch. Yeah, but they want your lunch money. They want your lunch. Yeah, uh, like, and if give me your lunch money, or you'll face the might of my axe. Oh, so this is a pirate. Was that also, you made was a pirate that a little, voice? Was that I a think. little? Was that a little pirate? I think so. All right, hold on. Maybe. Let me let me let me try to. I'm, so, I'm you know, we're still we're still on the show trying to workshop all these fun characters and ideas. So this is this is a fun kind of space. Let me let me try to get a let me get more uh, let me get more minotaur. Um, 
I'm, st I'm stroking I'm stroking my throat to kind of coat it for things to come. Let's see. Okay. Arr, uh, I'd be a minotaur. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's that's definitely a minotaur. That's definitely with a, not with a, a pirate. Peg leg. No, that was a minotaur with a peg leg. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, Give me your lunch money. That's that was still pirate. I can't I can't not do pirate. Apparently, you cannot pirate. I can't not pirate. Um, okay, so uh, all right, so it's a it's a it's a minotaur bull looking thing that's trying to take your lunch money. the The first thing is um, you can't not bring lunch money because your boss knows your salary, so it knows that you have lunch money. That's not a solution. Mm -hmm. um, second Can solution: you... take bullfighting classes, move to Spain, uh, then come back later. And fight him one on one. Okay, yeah, this is good. This is good. A lot, a lot of training. You're gonna pick up a new skill. Uh, Have very you tried marketable. Trapping your Minotaur boss in a maze underground labyrinth underneath your your office. Have you tried Ooh, that? Oh yeah, that's that's exactly. You're gonna have a huge advantage if you do that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you know you you trap them in there. You build you build up this labyrinth around them. Then they can't get out. And then. You're just you're just free to do your your is work. Is your is your place of work an escape room? Because if so, you're already you're already good. Yeah. Well, just just be careful. You don't want your boss to have too much experience in labyrinths because if they can get out, then what's the point? You know, you just wasted right. a lot of time and effort. Uh, what the other else? Thing you can what do else defeats is, minotaurs? You can. Well, I mean, from a from a lunch money standpoint, you can just cook. And not bring money. No, but then they're just gonna eat whatever you put in the fridge. No, but like bring like a salad. Like they don't. Oh, Minotaur, Minotaur don't want salad. Minotaur want flesh and bone. Which is weird because bovines are veg are they're not vegetarians. They're uh, herbivores. Yeah, I mean, okay, so okay, you're right. My mistake. Maybe you, you just bring a big old slab of meat. Ooh, yeah, big old beef. Just like a big beef Ooh. steak, and say, "Mmm, that's some good. That's some good steak I'm having for lunch today, Nicholas." Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Nicholas. Oh, you know what? Uh, on the other side, maybe you can reinforce your underwear so you don't get wedgies. Yeah, because that's that's a big one. Don't wear underwear. Uh, okay. Well, but back also to sexual harassment. Yeah, You're right. yeah back You're right. to that side of the uh, the boss uh, the boss thing. You're right. Definitely. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh, I guess, I guess, theoretically, if you're not wearing underwear, no one's going to know. You just can't also well, not wear pants. Yes. You do still have to wear pants. Next boss. All right. So uh, the last one on this list that they have highlighted is the people pleaser. I don't so, have a, I don't have a joke for well, that. Well, th this is interesting to me that they've highlighted this one. Does he just say if, please a lot? Does he yeah. just, like, please? <laughs> well... Well, he's well, he's of course, one-eyed, one-horned, uh, giant and purple. <laughs> one-eyed, one-horned, giant, purple people pleaser. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> But you know who doesn't? The people pleaser. <laughs> the people pleaser. Okay, different office problems. Um, the person that eats your yogurt, even though you definitely put your name on the yogurt, and you've seen their food that's also in the fridge that they put their name on. This is... Poison. This is... Never mind. Figured it out. Yeah, poison okay, your yeah. own poison, food. Don't poison eat it at lunch. Poison your yogurt. That'll get, that'll get them. And no, then, he... <laughs> does, does that hold up in a court of law? Can you, do you get I, risk I, for murder if you poison your own food? I feel like I've heard that, like, booby trapping is, like, not legal. Like, because the... Oh, cause shit, the, I, gotta, the unders... I gotta take down some traps then in my apartment. Because, but let's... It's... It's bullshit. Like, <laughs> if I put... If I put a row of spikes under my windowsill so that if somebody breaks in i'm protected and then they come in and they step on them and get all punctured 
How am, how is that me? They broke into my fucking house. Oh man, Kevin from Home Alone's probably in some deep legal shit. Yeah, he's been in juvie for like 20 years. <laughs> he's way older <laughs> than he needs to be to be in juvie. Yeah, it's he's like a up. 40 year old in juvie. That's how broken the legal system is in this country. Well, we probably shouldn't have made Joe Pesci in charge of his sentencing. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's yeah. probably the problem. Hey, did you ever watch Pirates on the Prairie? Sorry? It's like it's like that. Okay, so there was Home Alone, right? The great okay. the great Home yes. Alone series. Uh, familiar. Um there was another movie that I watched as a kid in which uh pirates attacked a small home on the prairie and that kid was home alone. It was only him. And he was being attacked by pirates, not Joe Pesci. On a, so he's being attacked by pirates uh-huh. on a prairie. And that's like the only difference between Home Alone and Pirates on the Prairie is that it's on a prairie and it's Pirates, not Joe Pesci. And his name wasn't Kevin. It was something different. Anyways, I just remember watching that. And even as like a seven year old, I was like, this is a ripoff of Home Alone. Clearly. Uh, I think it's called Pirates on the Prairie. I'm going to Google it real fast. Just I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already doing team. it. Uh huh. Is that right? Pirates on that right? the prairie. Pirates of the prairie? Pirates of the prairie, maybe? Pirates of the prairie is a 1942 Western film inspired no. by inspired by the banditti of the prairie. Okay, hold on. I'm going to look up Home Alone with Pirates. Oh, Pirates of the Plain is what it's called. Oh, it's called Pirates Plains, of the Plain. Very different environment. Okay, so he's it's Pirates of the Plain. Oh my god, and Tim Curry was the main pirate. Oh it was, no. he, it was Tim Curry instead of Joe oh, Pesci. Oh my god. Okay, so anyways, here's this everybody please go watch it. It's got basically one and two star reviews. It's arguably Tim Curry's worst movie. Parents need to let me read this review. Parents need to know that the 1999 children's adventure comedy Pirates of the Plain is a mashup of time travel fantasy and Home Alone. His name was Bobby. Okay, so Bobby, Nebraska, he gets, he's also in trouble. Even though, are pirates a part of the a part of the law? Booby trapping. Also, he attacks him with a weed whacker. I do have to throw that out there. That's like the one scene I remember is oh, that good. Tim Curry tries to attack little Bobby and Bobby pulls out a weed whacker and they think it's some kind of dark magic and they run away, but he That's attacks them with it. Weird. Yeah. Um, hey, let's let's do a fun... Uh... Hey, can we do a bonus episode where we review Pirates of the Plain? We both watch it and then we just review it. Oh, God, yeah. I think we have to now. Okay. Good. What, Unless uh, I edit that sentence in the podcast, but yes. Here's a uh, here's a fun here's a fun game. What uh, what score do you think this movie has on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, considering, I don't know. Uh, this is a fun this Let's is see. a fun kind of play at home. Let's go with 30, 37 is what I would give it. All right, I'm gonna get I'm gonna give the audience time to to get in their guesses. Oh shit! Twitter's blowing up with with reviews of Pirates of the Plain. Hey, what is it? Fifty percent. Wow. Bop, 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 bop. Dang. Yeah, that is. And it was way. It was actually way higher than I thought it would be, given your yeah. description of it. Our call to action this week is for you to go watch the movie Pirates of the Plain, starring Tim Curry, uh, about a boy named Bobby in Nebraska who has to fight pirates with a weed whacker. You can. Uh, how do how do they contact us, Austin? So if you want to, reviews? right, of course. If you want to uh, send us your review uh, via email, we are uh, bossfightcast at gmail dot com. Uh, we we try to look through those emails as we get them, uh, and we do need some more. So we'd love to read your review of Pirates of the Plane. Uh, you can also uh, find us on Twitter and tweet your review there. Uh, we are at bossfightcast. Uh, we also have a website. The Positive Thoughts uh, Network of Sorts. So you can find that at positivethoughts.com. That's P O D S I T I V E thoughts.com. Um, uh, we have a contact page on that now. So if you go to positivethoughts.com slash contact, there's a form that you can fill out to just send us whatever you want without actually having to 
email us directly. Yes. For the time being, uh, there's not a separate Pirates of the Plane review tab. We are working on that. Um, but for now, it's all one contact form. So, you know, just just be specific about what you're what you're submitting. Right. And the, the thing that we really want to thank you is for listening to this third episode. And if you enjoyed it, tell, tell somebody else, please. Just tell somebody that uh, you think that it would be up their, their alley. Because we want to be able to help the entire world with our boss fighting expertise. And yeah. this is the best way to do it, is just by word of mouth. Yeah, absolutely. Or word of technology um, by tweeting about the show or um, like sending in your questions so we have the support. Or we now have a Facebook page, uh, which you can follow and like. Uh, we'll be posting all of our um, episodes there, so you can feel free to check on that and uh, talk about the show on that forum as well so thank you so very very much we appreciate it i think that's about it right i mean that's all i have all right go watch pirates of the plane we love y'all all All right peace